Hey guys, I'm Priyanka Naidu and I'm a third year student studying at LF1. Today, I'll be talking about the male and the female reproductive system. The male reproductive system consists of the testicles, the duct system, which is made up of the epididymis and the vas deferens, the accessory glands, which include the seminal vesicles and prostate gland, and the penis. And the female reproductive organs are the vagina, uterus, fallopian tubes, cervix, and the ovary. Gonadotrophin releasing hormone is produced from the cells in the hypothalamus. It is then released into small blood vessels that carry the hormone to the pituitary gland. As a consequence, the pituitary gland produces luteinizing hormone, LH, and follicle stimulating hormone, FSH. These hormones, LH and FSH, are essential to male and female reproductive health. In childhood, gonadotrophin releasing hormone levels are low. As puberty begins, GnRH levels start to rise. When the testes and ovaries are fully developed, GnRH, LH and FSH production are controlled by the levels of testosterone and female sex hormones like the estrogen and progesterone. Ovaries lead to the production of estrogen, which signals to the pituitary gland to decrease the release of FSH and to produce more LH, causing ovulation and FSH in LH levels to drop. In men, gonadotrophin-releasing hormone stimulates the production of luteinizing hormone LH from the pituitary gland. LH attaches to receptor cells in the testes, which starts the production of sperm cells. The testes is the male reproductive organ. The functions of the testes are to produce both sperm and androgens, primarily testosterone. The testes are covered by a tough membranous shell called the tunica albuginea. Within the testes are very fine coiled tubes called seminiferous tubules. The tubules are lined with a layer of germ cells that develop from puberty through old age into sperm cells. The developing sperms travel through the seminiferous tubules to the reti testis located in the mediastinum testis to the efferent duct and then to the epididymis when newly created sperm cells mature. Within the seminiferous tubules, the germ cells develop into, into sperms through the process of spermatogenesis. The gametes contain DNA for fertilization of an ovum. Sartori cells, the true epithelium of the seminiferous epithelium, critical for the support of germ cells develop in germ cell development into spermatozoa. Between tubules exist Leydig cells, cells located between seminiferous tubules that produce and secrete testosterone and other androgens important for sexual development and puberty. Now let's talk about the blood testes barrier. Large molecules cannot pass from the blood into the lumen of a seminiferous tubule due to the presence of tight junctions between adjacent sartori cells. The spermatogonia are in the basal compartment deep to the level of the tight junctions and the more mature forms such as primary and secondary spermatocytes and spermatids are in the ad lumen compartment. The function of the blood testes barrier is to prevent an autoimmune reaction. Now let's talk about spermatogenesis. It includes three stages. Number one, proliferation and differentiation of spermatogonia, which are the germ cells. Number two, meiosis. Meiosis can be divided into two, meiosis one and meiosis two. Meiosis one results in the production of primary spermatocyte and meiosis two results in the production of secondary spermatocyte. And the third stage is spermiogenesis, which is a complex process that transforms round spermatids after meiosis into a complex structure called the spermatozoon. Oogenesis is the process by which mature female gametes or ova develop from germ cells. Primordial germ cells multiply during fetal development. At birth, the ovary contains around 400,000 primordial follicles which contain primary oocytes. 
These primary oocytes do not undergo further mitotic division and they remain arrested in the prophase stage of meiotic division 1 until sexual maturity reaches. At sexual maturity, two hormones produced by the pituitary gland, FSH, which is the follicular stimulating hormone, and luteinizing hormone cause these primordial follicles to develop. In each ovarian cycle, about 20 primordial follicles are activated to begin maturation. However, normally, one follicle, only one follicle fully matures and the rest contribute to the endocrine function of the ovary. When activated, the first meiotic division is completed. When this happens, the prim primary follicle has matured into a secondary follicle. The second division then starts, and a graphene follicle is formed. This contains a secondary oocyte. This second division is not completed unless the ovum is fertilized. Development of the follicles is stimulated by production of follicle-stimulating hormone by the pituitary gland. Development of the follicle then results in an increase in estrogen levels as estrogen is secreted by follicular cells. This increase in estrogen levels feeds back to the pituitary and suppresses further release of FSH via negative feedback mechanism. The follicles also release a second hormone called inhibin, which also suppresses further production of FSH. As the estrogen levels rise, this triggers a mid-cycle surge in a second pituitary hormone called luteinizing hormone, which causes the follicles to rupture by the process called ovulation. LH also causes ruptured follicles to luteinize, forming a transitory endocrine organ called the corpus luteum. It secretes progesterone and estrogen. The progesterone levels feed back to the pituitary and suppress further release of LH. If fertilization does not occur, the corpus luteum degenerates into a small white fibrous scar called the corpus albicans. The resulting decline in progesterone results in menstruation. Decline in estrogen levels feeds back to the pituitary and this increases the levels of FSH which begins the cycle all over again. Thank you.